Hello everyone and welcome back to another repair video of a Voodoo 1. This card was sent to me and it has artifacts. But not only that, also the owner sent me a thermal image where this memory chip seems to have gotten really hot. He removed the chip already and put it back and that seemed to have solved the issue, but the card still doesn't work. Now when I tested this card I got exactly the same output as he did and I thought well it's probably a loose contact around the 3dfx chips and I did the usual I went around all four sides of each chip and reflowed the solder but even that did not fix the card. So I tried several things. I went to Windows and DOS, ran Mojo, and Mojo always reported that everything is fine. We have 2 megabytes on the FBI chip and 2 megabytes on the TMU chip. We also always have the TMU and the FBI show up. But the moment I try to render any 3D scene, be it a game or a benchmark, either the system crashes or I get this output. After that I went over the board and did a full visual inspection, trying to see if there are any cracked components, specifically resistors. But there was nothing. The card is in really good condition, yes there are a few scratches here and there on the solder mask, but nothing to worry about. So we have not much to go on, except maybe this one memory chip that got really really hot. Everything else looks okay. So what I did is I tried to measure the pins in reference to ground, seeing if there is any difference from other memory chips that are on this board. And I was very successful with measuring resistance to another level recently. This was for the fake cache chip board, the PC chips M915i. I made two videos about this board. By measuring the pins of two seemingly identical clock chips, I could figure out that the original clock chip that was on the board had a reverse pinout. Before I blindly replace this memory chip, I think it would be a good idea to measure some pins and see if there is a difference. Then at least we have more evidence to justify the replacing of this memory chip. Black probe on ground and let's measure the ground signal here. It should be 0 ohms. Okay, so here is our ground and here is the plus, so here is the positive side. And okay, so we get 470 ohms. This is an extremely low value for this side of the capacitor. That means our 5 volt line that's probably connected to this capacitor is only separated to ground by 470 ohms. I think this is supposed to be in the mega ohms. So this is already an extremely weird reading. So let me move this around. We definitely have something going on on this board. Okay, let's use the multimeter and try if we can find something that is odd by measuring against ground. So, um, let's just start here with this memory chip. So here's our 5 volt supply and we have the 470 ohms to ground. Pin number 2, 4.7 kilo ohms. Pin number 3, 4.7. Four point seven. Okay, so next one, five volts, four hundred seventy ohms. Pin number two, four point seven. Pin number three, four point seven. Pin number four, four point seven. Pin number five, four point seven. Let's continue with this one. This is our chip in question. Four hundred seventy ohms on the five volt line. Pin number 2, 6.7. 3, 6.7. Pin number 4, 6.7. Pin number 5. Hmm. Only 800 ohms. So this chip only has 800 ohms on the fifth pin from the top. Let's compare this to our fourth chip here. I think uh, this one here is pin number 5. Also 800 ohms. Let's check one on the top here. Let's check this one here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hmm. We are in the 6 to 7 mega ohms range. 
So it looks like these two chips are sharing this one pin line, and I think this is an address line if I'm not mistaken. Maybe this chip is also responsible for the 470 ohms that we get between 5 volts and ground. However, when I looked at this card through a thermal camera, I couldn't really spot anything that's suspicious in terms of heat signature. So yeah, this memory chip looks normal now, but it could still be faulty and could be the reason for our card not to work. Okay, we have two values that we need to investigate. First is the 470 ohms from the 5 volt line to our ground, and the other value are the 800 ohms on our pin number 5 in reference to ground. So what we can do is to remove this memory chip and then measure these pins again and see if those values have changed. By the way, this pin is not pin number 1 and this is not pin number 5. I just mention it because, well, from this corner it's the first pin and the fifth pin that has those values that we discussed right now. Pin number 1 is here. This here is pin number 1. So you could count down. I think this is a 40 pin chip. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, when I said pin 1 and 5, these are from this corner. Before we start digging into this PCB, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, PCBWay. If you need a partner for your next project, you should definitely check out PCBWay. They offer a wide variety of services, including CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding. But that's of course not everything. PCBWay is well known for PCB manufacturing. And I'm very happy to announce that the black PCBs for the MidiForge Rhapsody have arrived. Now you can head over to PCBWay's shared project space and order your batch of MIDI Forge Rhapsodies today. So, if you look for a partner for your next project, head over to PCBWay.com and check out their services. Links are in the video description. Okay, I'm using my Aten hot air station for this. So let's heat up the board slowly and then we'll get rid of this memory chip. Okay, so memory chip is off. Now let's measure the values on this memory chip and see if we get different values. So first one is the five volt supply voltage. This had a 470 ohm resistance to ground. And we still have 470. This is most likely now because the board is hot. Okay, let's see what happens to pin number five. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, we still have 800 ohms. Hmm. So this didn't fix it. I still want to try and get this memory chip off as well because, well, these two are somehow connected to each other and yeah, maybe maybe there is something going on with this chip as well. But yeah, let's see. I don't know. Okay, second chip is off as well. Let's see if something has changed. Oh. Well, that's definitely different from what it was before. So I think this one here was our five volt supply. Okay, so one, two, three, four, Five. Aha! Uh -huh. We are in mega ohms now. So let's check our previous chip. Yeah, so this is our 5 volt. What we get here. 5 mega ohms. Pin number 3. 5 mega ohms. Pin number four, five mega ohms. Pin number five, five mega ohms. And this was over limit, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, hmm. This chip got hot 
but maybe this chip caused the issue. Okay, and if you're under the microscope, I already did some testing. Uh, one of the chips has a marking, this one. You can see it. This was the chip that got hot. But this is the chip, uh, the second one basically, that we removed. And this seems to be the culprit. 470 ohms. This is definitely too less. So yeah, this chip is dead. But it wasn't the one that got hot. Very interesting. So now what we have to do is we have to replace these two chips. Uh, this is the first one that I removed. This was the location where the chip got hot, but it was not our bad chip. Oh, and I also see that we have a damage to the solder mask here. Hmm. But otherwise, I think it's okay. I just need to remove the solder here now. And then I'll add new memory chips. Unfortunately, I don't have the same model of memory chips. So these two will have a different manufacturer. So this is a 35. I think I do have 35 as well. Yeah, to keep at least the speed for all chips the same. But yeah, let's clean up first and then we'll take care of the rest. So these are the replacement chips that I found. They are also 35 nanoseconds, as you can see here. So uh, I'll try my luck with these two replacement chips. If this works, then this is the first time a memory problem caused a Voodoo card not to work, at least for me. So that's very interesting. So the pattern that we have seen before may be linked to faulty FBI memory. So I'll just get these chips on this card now and then hopefully it will work again. Okay, the new chips are on the card. Let's quickly check what kind of values we get when we measure our 5 volt rail now. So let's pick our capacitor here. And we definitely get mega ohms now. So that's something very different from what we got before. Let's measure pin number 5 from the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 8 mega ohms. So before we had here 800 ohms and on our 5 volt line we had 470 ohms and now we have around 200 kilo ohms. So yeah, that's a lot better than before and I think we should test this card now. I have a feeling this might have been the issue. Let's see.
Okay, great. So we booted, we are in Windows, and hopefully our 3DFX card is working. Let's quickly check Everest, and then we'll start Unreal. So, yes, we have our Voodoo card with 4 megabytes, so that's great. I'll start just with 3D Mark. Okay, so the Voodoo card definitely was detected. Now the question is, do we get a benchmark run? Double buffering. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if this works. I think this is a very good... Oh! It does! Oh my goodness, it was the memory. I have never had such a fault and I'm very happy that I could figure it out. Look at that. Yep, yeah, there is nothing wrong. Well, that is very good that the 3DFX chips are not damaged. They're working flawlessly as it looks like. This is exactly what I would expect from a system like this. Nice. Okay. So we saved a Voodoo card by replacing two memory chips. Now, of course, I could have put this one memory chip back on the card that may still be functional, but it was connected to the same address lines as the faulty chip and that chip got very hot. So we definitely know that one chip is faulty, the one with the low resistance, but that was not the chip that got hot. The other chip, the second from the right, was the one that got hot. So yeah, I don't take any chances. I replaced both of them. Now there are two new memory chips on this board. And now let's quickly run Unreal. It's a lot of screen tearing going on, but that may just be my settings, I'm not sure. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video, also thank you to all my Patreons who are supporting this channel and my work, and you for taking the time and watching this video. Thank you so much, take care and bye bye.